Hey chat, we got some real bangers in the last day, and like bangers that work well together, that are sick and awesome, and are cards that I love that are older cards that I love, and cards that I've been enjoying in modern that are newer cards that I've been enjoying. So Season Pyromancer, we saw a few different Madness cards get spoiled yesterday, and this is going to round out that archetype really nicely, I think... There could be a Madness Hollowed One deck in Historic, potentially. Restoration Angel is one of my all-time favorites from Modern. Even without Kiki Jiki, she's just a sweet value card that this card having Flash makes it very good against Just Sky Control. Being able to play a spell they need to counter at end step and then more spells on your turn is fantastic. And notably, Restoration Angel has a fourth point of toughness. So her not dying to Lightning Helix is really key. So this is this is a card that will be very strong against control. Av E the Progenitor Ooze. Storm. If it's a token, it isn't legendary. Enters the battle with 1-1 one, one counter for each other ooze you control. Sick. This is, they're bringing back Historic Brawl, by the way, on a trial basis. So this is a something I will enjoy playing in Historic Brawl at some point, I am sure. We're getting an old Squirrel card. So this is a Squirrel card that's not even modern legal, I don't believe. Squirrel Wrangler here. Sacrifice land, make two squirrels. Sacrifice land, all squirrels get plus one, plus one. I don't know if the squirrel archetype's going to be competitive in Historic, but we're certainly going to try. Sylvan Anthem. Anything white can do green, can do better. Green can do anything better than white. Gives them one, one in scries on the battlefield. Do, 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 do. This card's probably fine. I've seen elf decks play this card in uh, modern before, and perhaps elves will want to play this in historic as well. This is a card that notably works very sweetly with Realm Walker because you'll be able to play elves off the top of your deck and then scry the card underneath them to try and find more elves to keep casting. Um, Territorial Kavu. This is a card that's probably... Not good enough for Historic. We have Shocklands, but we don't have Fetches for Shocks. And I think just Shocks and Triumphs without Fetches probably mean this isn't good enough. The odds that this is going to be a 4-4 or a 5-5 five five for you is pretty minimal, I think. And I think this is frequently just going to be a threat with no enters play value. That's either a 2-2 or a 3-3. Three three. So I we might be worth trying, but I wouldn't be surprised if this one isn't playable. Yes, Dryad of the Ilsen Grove does make Kavu a 5-5. Vesper Lark leaves a battlefield, return a creature with power one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Maybe. Long Tusk Stalker. This card's sweet. When it enters play or attacks, you get an energy. When it attacks, you can pay to, or you can pay two energy to give it one attack perpetually, which means forever, and a card in your hand perpetually plus one attack. I actually like that they're using this as an opportunity to um, add more energy cards to the format because the energy mechanic isn't one that's proven to be playable in this format, and a, and a key, key card or two like this could potentially push it up to be playable. You know, Long Tusk Stalker, Long Tusk Cub, a couple others, maybe we'll get a playable energy deck in the format. Timeless Witness. Not Eternal Witness, which is kind of a big deal. I was hoping we would get Eternal Witness so that way we could collected company into Eternal Witness style effect. This costing four is a pretty big increase. It does have the eternalized part here. So it technically like gets value flashing back from your graveyard later in a way. But I feel like this is probably not good enough. That being said, it is kind of sweet with Soul Herder. So this gets one one whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield. 
and at the beginning of your end step, you may exile another target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So it makes itself bigger, it re-triggers your blink effect. So yeah, so we already have Ephemerate, and we've got Restoration Angel coming, we've got Soul Herder coming, you know, Yorian's a playable card. I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to play some amount of blink decks here. Leonin Sanctifier. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature card in your hand. It gains lifelink perpetually. It's not particularly playable. Chatterstorm's probably not good enough. It just makes, makes some squirrels. Uh, Historic really lacks the, you know, ritual style of effects that make things like Chatterstorm and Grapeshot, um, Tendrils of Agony really be powerful so i'd i'd imagine this is probably a cube card or just something they were doing to do but probably not uh good enough to be playable goblin and archimancer i wonder if this could push goblins back into the format a little bit it's really good with the goblin lets you cast goblins off the top of your deck and it makes your Muxus cheaper, right? Like ramping up into Muxus is the best thing the Goblins deck does as it was doing anyways, and this lets you do that sooner. Winding Ways is a super playable card. It's uh good in things like elves and other creature tribal decks. It has lead the stampede style energy while also being able to help you draw lands if you're starved for mana. Are there any other spoilers people have seen around? This site doesn't always have, Goldfish doesn't always have everything. Let's check the other one here real quick. The site sometimes has some that Goldfish doesn't. Nope, in fact, it looks like they're missing a bunch that Goldfish has. The problem is that, like, Chatterstorm's just not very good when you're only casting it for two to three. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Full Effect. And I think that, honestly, this is the perfect way for them to be managing Historic. I think taking the sweet cards that were kind of underpowered in Modern and putting them in this format where it's slightly less brutal is a great a great way to be to be approaching things and I like I like how they've been managing things as a whole and I'm excited to see see where the where the format heads once we get once we get more of these and remember our next open is going to be August 15th so if you if you're interested in playing with these be sure to get ready to sign up for that we're going to have signups open soon um usually we don't fill up so there's not a huge rush and you could also um you also if you're just interested in watching we'll be doing full coverage here with that Oh, we've got Nether Spirit. Okay. I don't know if this card's particularly playable. We've, historically speaking, we've seen this see some amount of play in decks that have, like, this as its only creature. But just, like, getting a free Grizzly Bear back is, like, not particularly exciting or impressive, even if it does keep crawling back every single turn. Because you can't even play multiple copies of it, really. Because otherwise, otherwise it doesn't keep coming back. The fingers, like, it is a little creepy. 